Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered what would happen if you heated a kettle with no off switch with magma from the centre of the earth? This is how does a geyser work? A geyser is a spring that ejects water high into the air accompanied by a huge plume of steam. They need hydrogeological conditions to form and with only a handful of places on earth with such surroundings, geysers are incredibly rare. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, America is literally a hotbed of thermal activity and as much of the park sits in an ancient volcanic crater, it's home to around 500 active geysers. Old Faithful is perhaps the most famous of these and was the first to be named in the park in 1870. Aptly named, it is so reliable, erupting every 91 minutes that it's said to be the most predictable geographical feature on Earth. And whilst Yellowstone is the place to go if you want to see geysers formed by millions of years of thermal activity and tectonic movement, you'll also need three other vital ingredients before one will blow. First, water. Geysers big and small need water, without it they would simply be hot holes, but where does all that water in a geyser's eruption come from? Well, most are located near rivers or underground water sources and they draw their supply from these vital water tables. Others depend on rain and snow melt, which filters for miles underground before it makes its way to the root of their source. But all that water is completely useless unless you have the correct plumbing. A geyser requires at least one opening in the Earth's surface, known as the mouth. Sometimes this might just be a single long vertical tunnel, whilst others are formed from a series of shafts which run for miles underground. The system's formation also requires a high concentration of this. It's rhyolite, an igneous, volcanic, glassy-like rock which contains minerals that line the geyser's plumbing system. This natural hard lining is vital because geysers operate under such extreme pressures. Miles underground, the ends of these tunnels eventually connect with the thermals rising from the centre of the earth, and this is where we find our final ingredient, heat. We find geysers in areas of high volcanic and geothermal activity, and their water is heated by magma that lies about five kilometres beneath the surface of the earth. And whilst this might seem a long way down, this magma has actually seeped pretty close to the Earth's crust. Geysers form on the edges of tectonic plates, which are constantly in motion, and it's this energy and movement which can create volcanoes and even earthquakes, but also create the heat sources which geysers need in order to erupt. So that amazing eruption begins as water travels up the geysers' tunnels, but as these systems can be miles deep, the water at the very base of the tunnel becomes under incredible pressure from the water above it. And as the magma at the base of the geysers' tunnels warms the water from the bottom up, more and more energy builds in the system, and with no off switch like a kettle, pockets of water begin to boil. When these pockets become turbulent, they push a small amount of water out of the geyser's mouth, which in turn lowers the pressure of the water remaining in the tunnels. And it's with this sudden change of pressure and heat drop within the water that the geyser bursts into steam. The steam rapidly expands the volume of water by about 1,500 times, and it's this expansion which pushes the water and steam from its mouth and out as a violent eruption. The eruption will only stop when it either runs out of water or it cools down enough. Then settling down for just a few moments, the cycle starts all over again.